Thank you very much. I would like just to uh, highlight the fact that today we've seen that the links between climate change and migration are clear. And so it's more than a matter of uh, merely migration or climate. It is a matter of human security because migration, which is uh, induced through catastrophes and due to climate change, affects, affects the stability of states and of entire regions, as uh, has been said as well. It affects economic growth. It impacts human development and it affects poverty reduction strategies, which we are trying so hard to put into place. As uh, various speakers have said, climate change and migration brought about through it, forced migration, disorganized and chaotic migration, amplify fragility. So it's a global problem, and it is one of human security. And so we need to make this a cross-cutting issue in places and organizations where we look at conflict, human rights, and go beyond the area of migration. I'm very grateful that IOM has used a it's, an, it's session this year to use to cover the subject of migration and climate change. Man is at the center of this. Man is part of the cause, but also suffers the negative effects of climate change. Other speakers uh, asked questions. Are we aware of uh, resilience? When we develop the Nansen Initiative, we're not just looking at creating standards or a legal framework of come back to the question from Ethiopia, but what we want to do is to provide states, whilst we're still looking for details and data, we're trying to provide states with a means of being able to carry out practical action. Because in the Nansen Initiative, resilience is part of it. If we can prepare populations to adapt to withstand, that is a first step in controlling migration and making it less chaotic. If we can help during the migration process, that limits the negative impact of the migration. And if, when they arrive, either elsewhere within their own country or in another country, there are solutions in place to offer new perspectives that also mitigate the negative potential of this migration, and we can make it more predictable and manageable. That's something we need to work on. In addition to the standardization work that needs to be done, and I'd like to apply to the honorable delegate from Ethiopia, yes, the legal framework is still incomplete. And that's why, in a specific niche, we have decided to act uh, not in a binding and compulsory manner through a convention, but to look at how we can address solutions for a certain category of migrants. But the major challenge isn't so much the regulations, but the application of them. And there I'm also replying partially to a question from the Honorable Delegate of Venezuela when they said, what are we doing about multinationals? Yes, you're right, multinationals can be a vector with many negative impacts, but if they are well placed, they can also aid development. And I repeat that the multinationals work within the sovereign legal framework of a country, so countries need to channel multinationals that they grant concessions to. 
So it's a critical call on ourselves to make the first efforts to ensure that those who are in contact or could have negative consequences either through in some places, uh, if we think about mining activity where there's excessive uh, use, uh, that's also a responsibility of the state to ensure that that works and it should be on the agenda. So those are really the comments I wanted to make now. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ambassador. Ambassador of Bangladesh, Ambassador Aksan, you have to.